Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode in my Line 6 Helix in the Studio series. And this time I'm doing part two of actually the first video in this series, which is Helix as an audio interface. Now you might ask, why would you do a part two? You know, you covered a lot about how to use it as an interface, but this time I want to talk about how Helix can be used uh, as an audio interface with, as sort of the brains of, let's say, a hybrid guitar recording system, okay? A really popular thing for a lot of folks to want to do is use the Helix in conjunction with real guitar amps. Um, and in the studio, this is an amazing tool that we can have kind of the best of all options, as you're gonna see demonstrated in this video, utilizing one of the features that a lot of folks maybe don't use on their Helix. I mean, I'm sure a lot do as well, but that's the XLR mic input. Basically the microphone preamp that's built into the Helix. Okay, so let's say this, let's set up a scenario where we are recording an album or we're recording guitars for a production of ours. And we want to have options. Options are always a great thing. Mix engineers love options. I mean, we, we can get carried away with options to the point where we don't know what to choose anymore. But at a mix down, <clears throat> when doing a, a music production, it's always nice to have sort of safety nets and options that if one thing isn't working in the mix, we can always go another route. Now, one thing I talked about in this series is using Helix to reamp, right? So always capturing that USB 7 default uh, guitar DI so we could always go reamp later. Okay, but let's take this a step further and talk about some of the really interesting possible combinations. Here's the scenario I have today. Recording a real guitar amp through a... Now, I say real guitar amp, I'm using my Rev G20, which I absolutely love, uh, the G20 head. I don't have any real guitar cabinets. Uh, the Rev G20 sends a line out signal. I've disengaged all of its cab simulation and I'm feeding it directly into my Power Cab 112, which is set on its uh, greenback speaker modeling. So I'm treating it as a real guitar cab. And I have the Sterling Audio ST170 active ribbon mic in front of that. So I have a real guitar amp feeding what is our real guitar cab in this video. So that would work for, for any other type. Somebody had a Marshall head and a Marshall cabinet or whatever kind of amp you're talking about. That's going to be my real guitar amp. Now I could simply just plug in the front of that, throw a microphone in front of that, feed that into my mic preamp, in this case the Helix mic preamp, and be off to the races. But I thought let's take this step video a step further. Let's use the Helix kind of as a brain behind the entire operations. I'm not going to plug my guitar straight into the Rev G20, which is sitting here to my left. What I'm going to do is use the Helix to route many possibilities. Let's dive over to HX Edit and Cubase and take a look at what I want to do. Okay, so first things first, here I have Cubase, empty project. I'm going to pull up uh, HX Edit right here with an empty, completely empty preset. Okay, so we want options here. So number one, keep in mind, I want to plug my guitar into the Helix because I want to capture a couple things here. I want to capture the sound of my guitar direct. Now, if I plug straight into the Rev G20, I wouldn't be able to capture, or I'm using the Rev G20 in this case, but any other real amp, if I plug directly into that, I wouldn't be able to capture my direct signal without some sort of splitter box. Well, we're gonna use the Helix as a splitter. So here's what I'm gonna do. Plug my guitar into the normal guitar input on the Helix, that's fine. Then I'm going to send the unaffected dry signal out of the Helix to the front of the Rev G20. Okay, now how am I gonna do that? Well, number one thing I want to do then is I wanna set up a path here. I'm gonna need a bunch of paths actually. So I'm gonna, just for now, I'm gonna come over here and slap a gain block right here and pull that down to 9x path. I'm gonna create a totally separate path by taking my split and merge blocks and pulling it down onto its own separate path. I'm also going to do the same thing down here. Okay, I'm gonna add just a gain block pull it down, pull my split and merge blocks down as well. I now have four separate paths which I can add things to. So path one, I need to get the signal from my Helix to my real guitar amp, my Rev G20. Now one thing to keep in mind, we need to go into global settings. I am going to use my send one 
okay, to send the signal out of the helix into the G20. But I need to go into my global settings and, send, and set the, the send one to be a instrument output because the Rev G20 is expecting to see an instrument level. Okay, so that's gonna be a step that's, in my mind, is important. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we are going to have the guitar coming in on our, our guitar input on our path one, sending it through nothing at all, no processing, and we want it to come out our send one, two. So that's gonna send my signal out of send one which is then going to send the instrument level signal that we just set in our helix to the Rev G20. I will now get that signal hitting the Rev G20, which is hooked into my power cab, which is then gonna to go to the microphone. Okay, so I have the signal now going to the Rev G20, but now I need to pick it up with the microphone. So I have my microphone hooked up. I fed that into my XLR mic preamp in the helix. Now again, let's go back to the global settings. There's a couple things you have to be careful of here. If your microphone requires 48 volt phantom power, you need to engage that. You need to go into global settings and you need to turn that on. If you, your microphone doesn't need it, then you have to make sure that that's turned off, okay? So if you're using something like an SM57, you don't need that. If you're using most condenser microphones, you will need that turned on. Uh, in the case of my ribbon mic, it is a phantom powered ribbon mic, so I need to turn that on, okay? So that's an important point. So next to that, you're going to see the mic in gain, and that's going to allow us to bring a good healthy signal from our microphone into our DAW, okay? Feeding the mic preamp, right? Because we don't want a weak signal. Uh, some ribbon mics are rather weak on the signal. We may have to boost them more. It depends on how loud the signal is going into it. But those are some, some very important controls that we need to set properly for this to work, okay? So what I need to do is I need to go turn my mic preamp, my mic phantom power, sorry, on. And I'm also going to, as we do this, add a little bit of mic input gain, as you'll see. But now, so that's the setup. We're all set up. Now what I need to do is I need to say, well, on this path, what I actually want is the microphone set as the input. So now we sent our guitar through this path, through the helix, no processing, out of send one. That's going into the Rev G20, feeding the power cab. The power cab's making noise. It's being picked up by my ribbon mic, being sent back into the helix to be processed by the microphone. Now, this is kind of interesting because I can also, just like I mentioned before about the USB 7 being the default setting to record our DI'd guitar, we can also in, in the Helix by default use USB 8 to record the DI'd unprocessed, unaffected microphone signal. So some people may say, well, this is a step you don't need. I could just simply go into uh, my DAW, choose USB 8, and I will get the unaffected signal of my guitar amp. And that is absolutely correct. And we are going to do that as well, okay? What I am gonna do here though, and the reason I did this is let's say that since we can capture the microphone dry on its own on USB 8 without using a path, what about if we just add some effects here? What about if I say, well, you know what I wanna do? I wanna add maybe, an LA Studio comp, just processing things, just a little touch here, put one of that there, and then let's say maybe, and I'm just picking stuff to show you how it can be processed. I'm gonna pick a transistor tape, uh, set to quarter notes, just a subtle bit of delay, and uh, maybe we'll put a, oh, I don't know, a plate reverb, uh, plate reverb just set down here as well. Okay, so there. Now, what we're and we can get rid of this gain block. We don't need it anymore. That's gonna be just that was just a placeholder. So now what we have, we're sending our guitar in here, feeding that back out of send one two on our helix, which is hitting our Rev G20 chain and power cab chain, fed into our ST170 ribbon mic. That's gonna go through this processing, and I'm gonna send that out because I want to record that on a separate track. So I'm going to record that on let's say USB 1, 2. And we'll just be using USB 1 because it's going to be mono. Great, okay. So 
On top of that though, I've now got, so, so just to recap, I've now got a slightly processed version of that mic signal coming through my Rev G20. I've got the completely unaffected signal that's gonna be carried on USB 8. I'm also in my DAW when we get there in a second going to capture the USB 7 because I want my completely unprocessed dry signal in case I wanna reamp it at a later date. But let's also say, why don't we capture some model stuff from the Helix too. Let's just say maybe I go and I take my guitar input, also here, and I'm gonna feed that through, uh, let me see, I'll grab an amp and a cab. Hey, what the heck, since we're using Rev, let's go and do our Rev Gen Purple. I'm, no, I'm gonna change, I always change this cab out to a Greenback 25, uh, and I'll put, uh, let's do a 160 ribbon, and I'll do like, I don't know, four and a half inches back. Uh, I, I don't even know what this is going to sound like. I do want to make sure that I get some healthy volume coming out of here. Um, I'm not even going to change any settings. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm not really set up to listen to that right now. I'm going to grab my output and I'm going to send that to USB 3.4. Okay, so now what we have, when I strum that guitar, I hit that guitar note, it's feeding through this path out of Send 1, hitting the front of the Rev G20, which is going into the power cab which is being picked up by my, my uh, Sterling Audio ST120 microphone ribbon mic. That's being picked up here with the phantom power on, going through this processing and being recorded on USB 1.2. At the same time, I'm capturing, gonna capture USB 8, which is the unaffected mic signal. At the same time, I'm gonna capture USB 7, which is the unaffected guitar DI with no processing. And now I'm gonna send that same guitar signal through this model of the RevGen Purple, and I'm gonna send that out to USB 3.4. Sound confusing? Well, it's not so bad. Now, this path down here, I guess I didn't really need unless I wanted to do something else. I guess what I could do is come down here and even pick a different uh, um, amp model if I so desired. I could say, uh, let's pick, um, I don't know, a... Uh, Placate or dirty, okay? And again, I'm gonna maybe change this to, I'll go with the same Greenback 25, maybe with a 121 ribbon. I have no idea what these are gonna sound like right now. I'll go five and a half inches back and then I can get rid of this. I'm going to get my guitar input grabbing that and I'm gonna send that out to USB 5.6. So look at all the things I can capture. Now what we need to do, I'm gonna drag this off here because what I need to do is I need to now set up Cubase for this. Now, I have my MP project, I hit F4, and my audio connections input comes in. So what I need here is, I need to add buses, okay? I'm going to add, uh, what do we need here? We need a dry microphone, a DI USB 7, so USB 8, USB 7, USB 1, USB 3, and 5. So we need five different sources here, if I'm not mistaken. So let's add five mono, inputs. Okay. Now I'm going to name these so that I don't get confused. I'm going to say DI guitar for the first one. I didn't really want that all in capitals. Sorry. Not that it makes a difference. And I'm going to set that DI guitar to USB input seven. Okay. I'm going to take this one and call it DI mic. And I'm going to set that to input eight because that's what I want that one to be. I'm going to take this as Rev G20. Now, we remember from our Helix, the Rev G20 uh, with processing, okay? Because the Rev G20 is also gonna be recorded in input eight, but this is with processing. Okay, you know, you know what? Maybe that's a good idea to, uh, to name that uh, processed, okay? And that's gonna be on USB 1.2. So I'm gonna pick USB 1.0. All right, then I'm going to say input four is going to be Rev Purple Helix. And then input, and that's going to be on USB three, three, four. Uh, either one would work actually there. Uh, and I wanna make sure I'm doing this right. And then on input five, which it's already set as, I'm going to say, this is going to be Placator Helix. G20 
just so we know what we're dealing with. So we have our DI guitar unprocessed on input seven, DI mic on input eight. If any of this is confusing, go back and watch my original videos on this. I kind of go through this whole process of what I'm doing here. The Rev G20 processed, okay? Um, we could even call the DI mic, you know, come to think of it, Rev G20 unprocessed. That would also maybe be less confusing. Either way is fine. Then on input three, we have the Rev Purple from the Helix, and then we have the Placator from the Helix as well. Okay, so, wow, lots of interesting stuff going on there. So we can get out of that. Now what we need to do is we need to add five tracks, okay? So we're going to come to Helix. We hit our little plus sign here. And I'm going to ask it to keep the dialogue open so I can keep adding tracks. Now I'm going to start off with Guitar DI. And I'm going to go into my list here and I'm going to say, see that it says connect to bus? I'm going to, the reason I label these is there's no confusion now. I can just say, okay, DI guitar. That's going to set up that track, okay? Um, now these are going to be mono. I could do them as stereo tracks if I wanted. There's not going to be really any benefit to it. Uh, and I add that track. So that's guitar DI. Now this stayed open. So now what I want to do, I want to do uh, the Rev G20 unprocessed and I'll label that track G20 unprocessed. And my typing is horrible. And that is set up fine. I'm going to add that track. Then I'm going to go down and say I want the Rev G20 processed. So Rev G20 process. That's with those effects that we put on it. Okay, we've added that track right there. Now I'm going to go down and pick the Rev Purple Helix and we will choose that and that's added. And then finally we're going to come down and choose the Placator Helix and we have that there. Okay. So let's just choose those and make these all, whoops, a little bit smaller so we can actually see what's happening. Uh, that one got moved down inadvertently. Okay. So now we can exit our dialog box. Now, um, what we can see here is if I choose my mix console at the bottom, uh, actually, no, let me pull a mixer over here and we will see in our routing up here that our guitar DI is from DI guitar. That's where it's getting its signal, uh, processed, unprocessed, and so on and so forth. So we're all set there. Now we don't need our mixer up here. Now I've got to arm all of these tracks for record. I can use my mouse or I could hit R on a track, right? And it's going to arm those or disarm them. Now I also want to do this though. I'm going to mute these just so that when we play this back after I play something, we're not going to get any surprises, right? Uh, we'll just leave the guitar DI unmuted or, or we can pick and choose. Actually, we'll just mute everything. I've got to make sure that I've got some decent levels coming into here. So I've pulled up my mixer, as you can see right here, and I've got my DI guitar right here on the left. I, these are my input channels. I don't want to touch the DI guitar. That's not important because that's just our dry unaffected signal. But the Rev G20 unprocessed now, if you look at that level, it's quite low. I need to go down to my mic gain and raise that up. Now I'm going to give that maybe 21 dB of gain. Now watch this here as I hit the guitar. I could probably even go a little higher on that. Okay, so our FG20 process um, is okay signal-wise as well. Okay, now that we've got that up. Now our Rev Purple Helix, let's see. And our Placator Helix, those could both come out. So what I, up a little bit. So what I would do is come over to my output block on those. And I don't know, maybe give those an extra five, let's just say five dB on each of those. And we'll see what that does to our signal over here. And that seems to work now. Now you're not hearing anything simply because I don't have these monitor enabled, okay? So I've got to pick one of these that we can maybe monitor from. And let's just pick this one and I'll unmute that. So 
So what you're hearing there is the unprocessed Rev G20 feeding the power cab into the ribbon mic. That's the sound and the tone you're gonna get out of that. Now, if I was to pick a different one, for instance, the processed one, you should hear some delays and whatnot. Now, right now, what I'm hearing is coming out of the amp. If I wanted to hear something else, I would have to throw some headphones on and monitor that from the Helix, okay? So if you were overdubbing or whatnot, you might want to throw headphones on. To, to listen back to the track you're playing along with or whatnot, right? So whichever one I decide I want to monitor, I can just choose that. And I'm gonna, I'll keep the, uh, the unprocessed one selected for now so you guys can hear that. But it looks like we're all set up. So let me just do this then. Let me uh, record a little bit of something in, in uh, Cubase here and let's hear how all of these different uh, situation sound and if it works out all right okay so here we go here uh, i'll press record on helix Here's what I have. I can go back to the beginning and I can listen to each track. Let's solo the guitar DI and see what we have down. Exactly what I expected. The unprocessed DI'd guitar. Let's listen to hear what the Rev G20 sounds like. Let me just unarm all of these so we don't record over anything. The Rev G20 unprocessed. So this was a signal that we got from the default USB 8 direct signal from the microphone from the Helix. Pretty impressive tone. That's the Rev G20 with all of its uh, cab features turned off going directly line into a uh, a uh, power cab 112 mic'd by a uh, Sterling Audio ST120 ribbon mic into the Helix mic preamp unprocessed. The next one is going to be the same thing, but with that processing, remember what we had? We had a little bit of delay, a little bit of compression, a little bit of reverb. So now we'll hear that same tone, but now through the processing. <laughs> So we can compare the two. I could unmute this and I'll just solo back and forth. Listen to the unprocessed versus processed. It's nice options to have and it was a pretty easy setup. Now, the same thing we could have sent through the Rev purple in the Helix. I have no idea what this is going to sound like, but let's listen to it. Now keep in mind, I used, I believe, uh, a 160 ribbon, uh, different settings on the amp. That's a completely different speaker cab, let's say, in a different room that it was the IR was created from, right? So let's do this. Let's go back and forth between the unprocessed G20 and the Rev Purple Helix. So remember, this unprocessed is a real amp 
through a real mic. Very different tones, obviously. And then let's take a listen to what uh, the Placator Helix version sounds like. Pretty interesting stuff. One performance, I have all those options. I would never have a problem because I could reamp with the guitar DI. I could use the unprocessed and add processing to it in the mix. I could, if I had some effects I really liked from the Helix, I could put them on that. I could process it with Helix, uh, the unprocessed one with Helix Native. I could go and grab whatever other amps. I have all of these from that one performance. Uh, all just because of the routing possibilities. Now, would we necessarily do this on every recording? Well, no, not necessarily, but this was more to show the flexibility of the Helix and all the options that we do have. Something else that might be kind of cool here is if I took, you know, the unprocessed uh, left, uh, the processed right, maybe uh, the purple slightly left, and uh, <laughs> the uh, placator um, slightly right, and we could play all of those together, We'd probably want to maybe, you know, well, take the DI out of there, but lessen the volume on all of these and hear what all of these sound like mixed together for a real huge guitar tone, maybe. Again, it's fine, and yet again, any one of these would also work perfectly well on its own, and just get these all back to center, um, and flip through these yet again here. I'll just solo these out one at a time. Lots of different possibilities and lots of different tones. But I wanted to show you guys how that routing works and how the Helix is such an amazing interface. It's got the phantom power. It's got the ability to boost that mic input, which it would need to, right? Um, we have uh, the ability to have multiple paths, which we can feed through the digital modeling or through a hybrid system or into a real guitar amp all because the Helix is kind of being the brains of the system. We plug our guitar into it and then route it however we need. And it really shows how well thought out the Helix is and top quality sound through the whole thing. The, the sound quality of the Helix as an audio interface, something I never mentioned before, is really second to none. I have had some very, very high-end audio interface in my life and I really don't miss them. The Helix works beautifully. Uh, so it does a great job at that as well. I hope that was of some use to some folks. That was a fun one to do. I really wanted to do something where I could really showcase what the Helix is capable of. And maybe that sparks, whether or not you use all those possibilities, maybe that just sparks some ideas for you. You know, if you have some real amps, uh, that you're using. Use the Helix as the brains, right? You can capture your DI, you can capture the real guitar amp, and you can also maybe capture the same performance uh, of a modeled uh, preset that you have, and you, you have it all kind of just saved in one spot that works really nicely. So I hope that helps, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. I'll try my best to get back to them. Uh, I don't can't always. If there is one thing you want to help me with supporting, there's a link below uh, for my last album. I'm doing a vinyl pre-order press. So if you're into vinyl and you want to help support me doing these videos, maybe you could put an order in for one of those. The album features Marco Miniman, Tony Levin, and my good friend jo Jason Henry, and I'm very proud of it. And I would love to see the, uh, the vinyl print go to press. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like the video, share it if you don't mind, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification uh, and you can get notified when I put new videos up. And I will be back very soon with some more content. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in and ciao for now.